Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I'm finally back with another video and this one is going to focus a little bit more on layers, how to separate everything that's been combined into its own layer and uh, yeah, just talking a little bit about how all of that works for anybody who had trouble understanding. So here's one of my images that I haven't finished and I haven't went back to in a while. And uh, we're gonna take a look at, you see the background, layer one? They're both called layer one, but the bottom layer, the one that I have selected right now, uh, kind of combines everything. We have the little trooper that's jumping out. He's part of the scene. So if I wanted to change his size, <laughs> got a text message, whoops. Um, whatever. If uh, I want to change the size of the character, I'm going to need to separate him from that layer. So how do I do that? Well, one of the ways you can do that is I'm going to show you how to um, cut him out and put him in a new layer. So let's duplicate this image or this layer in particular. And we're going to go to the freehand selection tool, which is located next to the little pointer icon. And we're just going to kind of loosely uh, select this this uh, this thing that we want you know that we want to manipulate and you have to keep in mind that you know depending on what you're working on you might need to be more precise with it but you know there's not much detail at this stage so I can uh, kind of just you know do that uh, all right so now that we have this selected we want to we want to click the minus and basically everything but the little dude is uh, is now um, you know now we're able to manipulate so all we do is we grab an eraser and uh, we delete the rest of the image you can if you want to see the difference that I'm making you can unselect the layer that we are not manipulating and you can see that we're deleting everything but this little dude um, so that's why it's important that you create a duplicate in the beginning because you know you don't want to accidentally uh, end up erasing stuff that you cannot get back um, luckily there's enough undo for you to be able to go back and kind of fix your mistake if you um, didn't pay attention and kind of just went right in so now you know if I wanted to make this nice and make it part of the thing that you know part of the actual image if I needed this guy uh, to be completely separate from the background so that I can change his color, change uh, the contrast on him. Um, I would go in and I would clean up all these little extra uh, bits. But for the sake of time, you know, because I can talk about, you know, and show you the same exact thing without needing to cut this guy out perfectly. I'm just going to uh, go back to go back to the other layer and we're going to continue. So I'm going to turn the other layer on and we're going to turn off the separated new object that we have. So now why you would even want to replace stuff in the first place is we can paint over this dude. We can get rid of him and uh, in the future we're going to be able to reposition him and I'll show you sort of what I mean by that. So let's kind of quickly just get rid of this guy, right? Just imagine this looks really, really nice. But, um, yeah, we're going to go in, get rid of the guy, grab local colors, and uh, use that as a quick way to, to paint stuff in. So this whole transforming tool um, is really really handy in the early stages of the painting when you're still laying stuff out and there's not much detail and there's not much to redraw you can really quickly adapt okay so now you see that it still looks I mean obviously you could see the rough patches but if I wanted to clean it up it would look good but now when I go to the new layer the the flying jetpack guy himself when I click the transform tool uh, it looks like I missed a little bit of erasing on the bottom that's why the square is so big so I'm going to do that right now, just grab an eraser, go through, let's see if that fixed it, no, I want to find that. Um, oh, one, another way you can do it is if you select, eraser, make it larger, oh, that's why I didn't get it, because I had such a small eraser selected. Um, no, it's still there, because I can see, 
Okay, there we go. See? Now he's got the small square selected around him. That means there's no other pixels uh, in the area. So yeah, you see? I can now move him. I can make him larger. We can make this giant dude who's not even out, outside the plane yet. You know, if I wanted to do that, but obviously I don't. You can also um, undo that. You can also have stuff like magnet lock so that it keeps its proportions. You can twist him. You know, he jumped out a little bit crooked, fell asleep on the way out. Uh, all of this is, is, you know, a really good thing to just have access to. And um, that's one, one reason to why you would want to separate out the layers. Another, another reason, you, uh, another thing you could do is I can cut out the background around the ship so that I can change the scenery completely without worrying about touching the background. Um, like a lot of a lot of really great little things that uh, come from keeping layers separate. If you're a beginner and you feel like it'll help you uh, name stuff, so that you can, uh, you know, be able to spot what you want to change and what you want to keep a little bit faster. You know, you just tap once on the layer that you want, uh, and and you hit the little rename button. Let's do a main droid, mail droid, whatever. Yeah, that's how they deliver mail in Star Wars. Um, and like I wanted to, to show you earlier, if you uh, you can alpha lock, which means you know it keeps everything, it keeps you from drawing outside the edges. So if I was to select his shoe and try to draw outside of the strokes that are currently there, it wouldn't it wouldn't allow me. Um, so that's pretty nice for for drawing within within the lines if you weren't good at drawing um, coloring within the lines as a kid. But another thing you can do is you hit the adjustments tab and we have hue, saturation, and all this other good stuff that, um, well right now there's no color so you won't see a difference, but if I do decide to add a color, say like this, um, one way I could add color, and I'll show you guys how to do that, Oh, there, there should actually be a tab for recolor. Uh, no, because it's black and white, it doesn't work that way. Um, but one w one way I could do that is I can duplicate this layer. If I have it on alpha lock, I just draw, fill in this new layer with a color. It you'll see how the edges aren't perfect but with a little bit of tweaking it'll still save you time if you need to like overhaul the entire thing now you choose the color tab see and now he's this like kind of nasty red color so we'll wanna I think we'll wanna switch whatever purple sure we'll go with purple you see how the edges are still a, a lot lighter than I would want them to be and that's you know that's mainly because we didn't do a very good job of cutting the original thing so I'll merge that down and after merging you see how the the very outside colors get a little bit darker that's what we're gonna want to fix uh, with the eraser so you know you can grab the eraser it doesn't matter if it's alpha lock because you're actually able to erase you're just not able to add more content outside of the existing lines so you know I erase right here and then I go back to the the brush and you see how I can't draw past it anymore so that's what alpha lock does keep in mind you know if you're trying to draw stuff and you're frustrated why isn't it working it's because it's alpha lock um, so yeah you change the color purple let's say I don't like it okay recolor this guy now oh, it's got this oh you choose what what color is already I think on the uh, on the screen I don't know or you go to the hue saturation and brightness which is a lot easier and you change the hue so if I wanted a green dude I can make him green I can turn the saturation up or I can lower it and make it a little bit more uh, you know washed out change the brightness let's say I change the brightness to that but I need to turn up uh, contrast or something you can go to curves raise the contrast and the brightness you can change uh, you can adjust specific color uh, color things on the RGB scale on the left here another thing you can do uh, there's sharpening there's noise you know the blur all of that good stuff 
color balance itself uh, obviously allows for a huge amount of tweaking. You can do just the highlights, a specific color. So you see how the outlines on the very outside are now pretty much sky colored. So maybe if you had a specific amount of the character selected, you know, with the sky, you can you can use that uh, adjustment and make it, you know, how you see fit. But anyways, that's the layers. Remember, if you want to merge stuff that you for sure don't want to go back and fix later. If you're doing a client piece or a piece that you you know that you might tweak, for example, I have the main droid on a separate layer because I might not like his positioning and I want to move him a little bit. But you see now the shadow underneath him is off, so I would possibly want to keep the shadow on a separate layer as well or as part of the image itself. Um, so that if I move the guy, the shadow goes along with him. And one way, that one reason why you would want to keep the shadow on a separate layer is because you can apply something like an overlay to it. I can grab, you know, a slightly darker gray color, and I go in and and apply the shadow. Obviously, this is a little too intense, and I can just go back and uh, lower the opacity on the layer. But I'll show you guys what I mean by keeping it on one layer so this is not going to be realistic in any way uh, I'm just using it to kind of explain to you how it works but you would use the overlay layer possibly if you were trying to make adjustments so let's say I, I move this dude and I'm like oh no now I have to redraw the shadow psych you just grab the shadow layer and you make adjustments you know you can make tweaks you can uh, use the eraser it's uh, really handy for that and you'll see a lot of professional artists use things like layers to really speed up their work efficiency and they use a lot of the uh, advanced you know it's not even really an advanced tool but they'll use a lot of uh, transform tool and a lot of tweaking uh, not to mention you know you can even you can even flip objects layers uh, one easy way of doing that is use the the little flipping icons so if I wanted to make this guy face the other direction it might not work uh, for the perspective, but you know, you flip them, and then you're like, "Oh, dang it! What about the shadow?" Well, because it's on a separate layer, you could do the same thing. You click the transform, boom, flip it. Guess what? It lines up. And yeah, that's my kind of quick tutorial. Hopefully, I covered you know some stuff. There's rotating. There's you know obviously a lot of a lot of little things you'll pick up from uh, painting in this program by yourself. But it's pretty standard and it works with a lot of computer programs as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe I'll be able to get a video out for you guys that shows showcases another painting. Maybe I'll do a YouTube uh, live stream. I don't know yet. But anyways, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, take it easy.